This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. It's OBEHAVE with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the Obehave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. You know, I love the phrase, going to the dogs. And that phrase carries extra special meaning to today's special guest. She's dedicated her life to making each and every day a positive one, not only for dogs, but for the people in their lives. Please give pause and applause to arguably one of the world's top dog experts, the remarkable Teodi Anderson. Hey, welcome to the show, Teodi. Thank you, Arden. What kind words. Thank you. Woof, I've met every word. <laughs> You know, folks, Teodi is here to share some tips and tricks and insights into why dogs do what they do and how you can boost your bond with your canine pal. She's also going to offer some ways to ensure the both of you have a great and safe summer and uh, a little bit more for a shout out for those gray muzzled pals, our senior dogs. So call your dog over. We're going to get started right after this commercial break. Time for a pause. For furry ones, actually, sit and stay. All Behave will be right back. Hey, it's me again. Yep, Arden Moore, host of the All Behave show, doing this commercial. You know what I love? I love my cats. I love pet safety cat Casey. I love my sweet Mikey. And I love one-eyed Morty. Each one has their unique personality. Casey's a pet safety cat and teaches pet first aid. Mikey loves to lounge on the couch and purr in your lap. And one-eyed Morty, he's just a purr, purr, purr machine. Now, you know what I don't love? Cleaning up the litter for Casey, Mikey, and Morty, which is why Arm & Hammer created new cloud control litter. There's no cloud of nasties now when I scoop. It's 100% dust-free. It's free of heavy perfumes, and it reduces airborne dander from scooping. Yahoo! So, what happens in the litter box stays in the litter box. New cloud control cat litter by Arm & Hammer. More power to you. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Our special guest today is also a very good friend of mine and all the dogs out there. Teodi Anderson is a certified professional dog trainer, best-selling author, speaker, and one cool chick. She is based in South Florida and is part of the Odd Dogs Best Friend Company. Uh, you might even have one of her books or have been fortunate to take one of her dog training classes. And Teodi, by the way, is also the host of Get Positive Results. It's a show also on Pet Life Radio. Now, Teodi, if I read your entire resume, we would run out of time for today's show. So, <laughs> you know, enough of my yapping. I'm really so delighted that you could be on the show. And let's just get started. I mean, going to the dogs, not a bad way to live, right? Absolutely not. I've made it quite fun. So, I mean, were you a child where your first word wasn't dada, but dog dog? What Probably. So tell us a little bit about what got you into this biz. I have always loved dogs. And when I became an adult, I don't know, does that ever happen? But when I became yeah. an adult, I got a three-legged Labrador came into my life. And I love this dog. He was amazing. He was so gentle and so outgoing. And I thought that he would be really well-suited for therapy work. I had read about therapy work and really wanted to do it. But mm-hmm. at the time, I had some Shelties that needed therapy. They couldn't give it to you. So I got this Labrador. 
And I started training him for to be a therapy volunteer, and it turns out I had a knack for it. And I started getting more involved and learning more about it and studying and taking classes and going to conferences and workshops, and it kind of snowballed from there. I did therapy work for him for many, many times, uh, many years. He was the first pet partner in North and South Carolina at the time when wow, I was living there. Wow, what was his name? Cody. Cody, okay. Yes. And I've done therapy work with my dogs since and um, trained others to do therapy work and done training for professionally now for over 20 for years, so wow. it all started with a three-legged lap. Well, there you go. That sounds like a, it could be like a country music song. What do you think? <laughs> started with a three-legged lap. Three-legged lap and three chords. That's all we need. <laughs> That's right. There you go. That's good. You know, you mentioned pet partner, and uh, I know you know that I have a couple of therapy pets, uh, Casey and Kona, my dog and cat. So I did have one of my previous dogs, Chipper, was with pet partners. There's also a group called Love on a Leash, and and uh, Laura Christensen has a program. So I don't know. I, there's just a special connection, don't you think, when you have a, a dog, cat, rat, or whatever that is certified as a therapy pet? I do. I do. And and it's wonderful to give your time to the people that don't have access to pets all the time. We have uh, several clients that I've helped uh, in the past year train to get their therapy certifications. And I'm just as happy when they pass as they are. <laughs> I'm so yeah. thrilled for them. I think the world needs more therapy pets. What do you think? I do. I do. I think it would be a more calm and relaxed and happy place. <laughs> they don't talk politics. They're non partisan aren't they? <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. That's what I like. But you do have a lot of credentials, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't cover a couple of things. Folks, she is based in South Florida right now, and, uh, you know, she has a number of books, and uh, one of them I, I really like, and I'm going to get the title of it. I like the Dog Behavior Problem Solver book. And you know what? We always think it's the dog that has the problem, but it's kind of a package deal, isn't it? Talk a little bit about how you definitely also train humans. Well, if you think about it, we take these dogs that do very dog-like things. They dig and they bark and they jump. And then we bring them into our homes and say, don't do any of those things. <laughs> and yes. From their perspective, you know, it's a little bewildering. But a lot of times people add to the problems of the dog. The dog just needs to understand what your rules are. And they have to be fair rules, but they have to understand what those expectations are. And then you have to understand how to reach those expectations. And so, yes, I, I usually it's lesson two. Sometimes it's lesson five or a client will turn to me and go, you're training me. I'm like, da, yes, da, da, da. yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> the dog is easy. Um, but people are awesome. And, and, and the more they get involved with their dog and the more they understand how the dog's brain works and, and the dog's motivation, the more they can work as a team. And I always love to see that moment when it really clicks together. And speaking of dogs' brains, you know, one of the things I sometimes hear folks say is, well, I, I adopted a senior dog and that's applaudable. But I, I can't teach him anything. He's, he's got gray muzzle syndrome. He can't learn. How do you debunk that? And let's dive into the senior dog brain. You can absolutely teach an old dog new tricks. We learn something new every day, or we should, right? We learn new things all the time. And an older dog actually has a better attention span. You, you, teaching my puppy class is like herding a crazy little pack of puppies. You know, they, they're one minute they're sitting and looking at you adoringly, and the next butterflies, and they're gone. And so, you know, so an older dog actually has a better attention span. Now, an older dog may have a longer history of habits that you need to fix, but they can absolutely Absolutely learn just as well as their counterparts. I once had a retired couple who brought their 11 year old golden retriever to my class because they wanted something fun to do with their dog now that they both were retired. And that dog rocked the class. He really? outshone every other dog and he had no training before that he just thought it was fun to be out with his mom and dad they came to class every week he had it was awesome it was awesome and he was 11 wow so how do you do that what's a tip or trick you can share with people that have an older dog and and why is it important to work their noodle in addition to their their body working their noodle keeps them interested keeps them fresh keeps them younger it, it gives them something to do 
you know, they always tell us that we should, you know, enjoy hobbies, you know, in our twilight years and we should keep going out and exercise. The same thing goes for your dog. One of the things I say is just start with the basics, you know, start with your sits and starts with your um, name recognition and eye contact and start with simple things and then go on to high fives, go on to spins. You just have to be careful of your dog's physical uh, mm-hmm. aspects. You know, some right. older dogs, they have arthritis or some hip issues or things like that. So don't ever ask a dog to sit pretty up on its hind legs if it's got a bad back. We would never do that. Right. But don't think that you can't train an, an older dog. And if you're thinking about adopting an older dog, know that you can teach an old dog new tricks. Don't turn down maybe this wonderful opportunity to share your life with an older dog because you think it's already ruined. It's not. So I like the issue about knowing the dog's health status. You know, they do have a little creaky bones and things like that. So beyond the sit and name recognition and high five, what's a gentle, fun trick that works the dog's brain but also engages the person and their dog? You know, keeping in mind they, they may have some health limitations. Nose work games are always fun. If you think of the shell game where the person yeah. puts something in the shell and you spin it around, you can get some Dixie cups or some Solo cups and put a treat underneath it and make it easy at first. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't put <laughs> ten cups down. That's me. <laughs> so put, put a couple cups down and you know spin them around a little bit and encourage your dog to find the right treat and then start adding cups and making it a little bit more challenging. Uh, there's, of course, some puzzle games that you can purchase on the market, but that's just an easy one you could do at home. But the, the nose is usually the last to go. It's my understanding. So nose games can be really fun. Oh, and like a senior likes to use his nose just as much as a young dog does. Yeah, that's very good. All right. And, you know, this is the summer. And as you know, I do a lot of traveling with my dog, Kona, full name, Ice Cream Kona. And uh, <laughs> she was a skinny dog I, I got at a shelter in uh, California. And she was really underweight. And now she's filled out. And I swear it's all muscle. But one of the people said, ice cream Kona, huh? Looks like (laughs) you've had too much ice cream Kona. And I'm like, wait a minute. She's like, we're walking two to three miles every day, five days a week. She's in all these classes and all that. But I'm really trying to maximize her. And why is it so important? Everybody says, well, I got to walk the dog. How do you get out of that mindset and make it, I'm going to walk the dog? That's a great question. Remember that it's for the dog. Again, we take these dogs and, you know, don't sniff that. Don't (laughs) dig there. Don't do these things. Come live in our suburban or condo environment and do nothing all day. It's not, it's not really, it's not really good for them. They're going to last longer if we keep them challenged and keep them interested. Plus, it's really nice to have a companion that you can take to the local bistro and have a nice meal and the dog's not jumping on the waiter and, and you can take them places. It's make it part of your family. They really want to be part of our family and we can find ways to make them more livable and teach them some manners so that they can go out with us. But it is hard. I know it's hard. There's a workout routines and stuff that I'd really dread and I don't like doing either. But when I start thinking about it from my dog's perspective, it kind of motivates me to get out and do a lot more steps for my step tracker. Yeah, I'm like you. I just bought a a cheap version of the knockoff of Fitbit. And I would rather walk with Kona and our dog, Bujo, than to walk by myself. Yes, me too. Even picking up their poop. And the other day, it was a double deuce day. I'm like, really, dudes? (laughs) And they really like to do it so that it's far from the the next receptacle. Of course. That is the primary goal. Isn't that dog humor? It is. All right. That is the dog game as well. I think, they, they, you know, we're sitting here talking about all the games that we can engage, and they're thinking, oh, my favorite game with the human is to wait until I'm the farthest from the receptacle. And yeah, 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 that's, that's true, that's true. So let's have a little 411 on the, the dogs in your life. I think you share with me, uh, you had, uh, you got married a couple of years ago. Congratulations to Thank Tim you. and you. And, uh, so you, like me, inherited a furry Brady bunch. Yes, yes. I brought two, he brought one. Okay. Um, so and how I was have, the merger? It was fine. It, my boys are pretty laid back. I have two boys. I have a 12-year-old Papillon named Finian and an 8-year-old Belgian Tavirin named Sawyer. And he brought a now 5-year-old Yorkshire Terrier named Rosie. And she rules them both. So <laughs> <laughs> she's the four-pounder and uh, Finn's Ted and Sawyer's 50. And the little four-pounder rules the roost with a mighty 
terrier brain and the boys are, you know, completely intimidated by her and all's, all's fine. Oh, that's good. So that's something that is important to realize. Sometimes you have to get the genetics uh, factored in when you're working with your dog. Not every terrier acts the same way, but when you're teaching your classes to folks and they bring in a terrier versus a beagle or a lab, what are some things that should be kind of kept in mind knowing that, there, of course, there's always exceptions? That's another great question, as always, Arden. I get this a lot, um, yeah. especially with new puppies. Okay. They're starting to hit adolescence. People are getting frustrated. We talked about exercise a second ago. They'll bring home a, a doodle, a labradoodle, golden doodle, a labrador, an athletic sporting breed dog, and they're frustrated at how much energy this dog has. Uh-huh. And I tell them all the time, I said, you chose to bring home an athlete. You didn't bring home a couch potato dog. You brought home an athletic dog. And this is what you have. And this is what this dog needs. And that kind of makes them think that, well, you know, I chose them. You're right. I I went and picked it out. And so now I've got to step up and understand how this dog's motivation is. Because their motivation is completely different. A lot of my Asian breeds, my wonderful Chows and Shiba Inus and Akitas, they're not really good for 30 reps of an exercise. Pretty much after they've done five of them, if you haven't seen it and seen them perform it, they think that you're blind and it's your problem. Their motivation is different. You know, a border collie will do 30 recalls if you ask it to because that's <laughs> this work point. ethic. <laughs> like that. I like that. More, more, please, sir. A little bit more. And what about the Papillon? The Papillon is a fun, well, I'm a little prejudiced towards right. Papillon because I had them since I was a child, but they're a nice, uh, they're a big dog in a little package and they're very bubbly. They're very eager to work. They're fun to train. They're fast though. So you have to stay two steps ahead of them in order to actually be the one training (laughs) in that couple relationship. Oh, my gosh. Hey, folks, we're speaking with Teodi Anderson, and uh, she's the host of Get Positive Results here on Pet Life Radio. But I also want you to dash after the show to her website. She's got a cool first name, T-E-O-T-I, Anderson.com. And she is a certified professional dog trainer. She's rocking it for the, the dogs all over this world. And we're going to find more about this after we pay for the show by taking this quick commercial break. So you guys know the drill. Sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Pause up, everybody. This is your host, Arden Moore. And guess what? I wear different collars in the pet world. I am also a master instructor in pet first aid and CPR. And I have some great news for all you. Safety is one of the best skills you can learn for pets that you have and those that you care for from other people. That's why I'm excited to let you know we now have a two-day online interactive pet first aid instructor program. Yep, I have teamed up with Pro Pet Hero and I am your instructor. We use Zoom technology, which is great. So you can be wherever you are in North America. I can tap into you and we have a class of up to six people at a time for two days and we teach you all the veterinary approved hands-on skills to become a pet first aid and CPR instructor. To learn more, please go to Pro Pet Hero.com. This is your chance to be your pet's best health ally. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. Hi, this is John O'Hurley reminding you you're listening to the O Behave Show with Arden Moore on Pet Life Radio. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to OBHAVE. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the OBHAVE show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I'm trying to think, uh, Teodi, how long we've been friends. It's got to be at least 10 years, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So we've met at conferences. You've got a great smile, a sharp wit, and we've always talked about teaming up to do something where I can go to the cat side and you can go to the dog side. I love dogs and cats, but I am in no way in your talent pool when it comes to dogs. But what's up for you right now? Where are you teaching next or speaking or how can people learn more and pick your brain? 
Well, they're welcome to come to the website, TOD, as you wonderfully spelled, Anderson.com. I have a Facebook page that they can also reach out to, the public figure page. I will be speaking at the Pet Sitters International Conference in oh, November. Cool. And I think it's in Winston-Salem, New North Carolina this year. Well, there you go. You're back home, aren't you? Um, I'm sort close. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Carolinas are home, so yes. And what's your topic you're going to be talking about? I've got a couple topics going on. One is uh, especially I'm excited about is when things go badly. <laughs> so you're out, you're a pet sitter, and you're walking a dog, and here comes another dog charging you, or your dog gets loose on you. What do you do? So I'm all about prevention and training, and so I'm hoping that I can help pet sitters understand what to do when bad things happen so that they don't panic and so that they have a plan to pull it together. So let's give one example because we don't want to showcase your entire talk. But this is important, <laughs> you know, not only just pet sitters, but the folks that are walking their dog, minding their own business. And here comes a charging dog and you feel the piddle go down your pant leg. I mean, what's a couple of tips that you can do for yourself and your dog to protect them? Well, the worst thing you can do is run. You don't want to run away. And right. While a lot of dogs, not every dog, but a lot of dogs will do a lot of blustering before they attack. If you've got a dog coming at you, lowered head, hard stare, not making a sound and just coming at you like a bullet, you're just going to have to protect yourself. But a lot of dogs are barky and they're all, get out of my way or whatever. I always travel with treats on my body because I'm a dog trainer. So what I like to do is I take a handful of treats and fling it at the dog, turn and go in the opposite direction. That usually confuses the heck out of them. So okay. not oh, everybody yeah, because they're like, I can't be happy and mean at the same time. <laughs> exactly. like, I gotta wait, wait. eat. Oh, I gotta eat you. No, I want to eat the treat. I'm, I can just see the brain conflict going on inside that dog's noodle. Exactly. It usually confuses them long enough for you to make it escape. Um, I took self defense classes. I, I, those were wonderful, and they said, you know, we're not going to teach you to be ninjas. We're teaching you to get away. And so my technique is, you could take a handful of treats and freeze dried liver all over the ground. Maybe the dog would be confused, especially those dogs that are really conflicted. They don't really want to engage, but they're going to make a big noise about it and just to get away. But that would be one of the tips that I would offer. And what about when you have a little guy? I had a, I have a retired surf dog. Believe it or not, Cleo is now 17. Oh my and, gosh, really? Yeah. And when, you know, she gets excited, I call it monkey mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, to the dog coming, it's like, eat me first, eat me it's, first. Seriously. <laughs> So what do you do when you have the tiny one and you got to like, you got a big dog go out, but galloping I'm, your way and the little dog's making mouth. <laughs> yes. Uh, you could shove the treat in their mouth and oh, <laughs> make them be that's quiet. That's a good one. <laughs> but I do pick up dogs and you don't, some of the dogs that approach you on a walk are not going to have ill intent. Sometimes they just want to go say hi. Yeah. But you do have to be careful simply for size differences. And it's not that you should walk around being panicky that your little four pound dog is going to be attacked by a 50 pound dog. But for safety reasons, I do pick up the little one simply because an over exuberant Labrador can, you know, hurt a smaller dog just by saying hello. Yep, uh, yep, yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, but so what I about can, if you have a big dog and there's a big dog coming, you have your dog on a leash. Is that dog at a disadvantage? It depends. Okay. It depends. I mean, you could let it go, but what if it runs out into traffic? You know, I would yeah. rather hold on to them and keep hold of them than to not. And okay. there go mine right now. Oh, I hear Rosie. Rosie's yeah, the Rosie's loudest. The one. She, she is the loudest, isn't she? I don't hear Finn at all. Finn's being good, right? He's being good. He's my angel. Hey, uh, one thing I want to get you, like my, are uh, Fear Free Certified, and uh, that's the uh, group with showing how to reduce fear, anxiety, and stress in, in dogs and cats through Dr. Marty Becker's uh, group. But I love you had an article that I think is perfect as we're getting teed up for the summer and noisy things like the fireworks and, and storms. And it was an article you wrote, and it was called Five Ways to Make Your Dogs Fear Worse. So explain a few tips for us on how we can actually avoid accelerating a dog's fear unintentionally. Sure. I do have to clarify, though, I am not fear-free certified oh. yet. Okay. I do write for the fear-free bra, but I am not fear-free okay. certified yet. It is a, a certification that I am aspiring to. Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. We have um, corrected that for our <laughs> listeners. Yes. Before Dr. Marty Becker comes after me and goes, hey, yeah. uh, you, know, you don't have yours yet. Yeah, um, go ahead. So one of the things is is waiting to treat it. And a lot of people think that it'll go away on its own, and it doesn't. 
it just won't. It's it's really hard for a dog to overcome that, and they really do need help. As a dog gets older, too, fears get worse. Yeah. So if you have a dog that's, you know, eh, a little icky eh, around thunder, by the time they get to be elderly, they're going to hate thunder with a passion and it's going to be terrifying to them. So getting treatment early is really, really important. Okay. And what about, you know, people sometimes get frustrated and they even yell at their dog, you know, it's not that scary. And why is that such a doggy no no? <laughs> Has that ever worked for people? No. <laughs> Yeah. That's what I tell them. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Yeah, so yelling at a poor dog that's turning into a puddle, it probably messes up them more than helps them, right? It absolutely does. If you're terrified of something and someone says, oh, get over it, oh, you suddenly feel better about the whole situation. <laughs> that never, that never happened. That has never yeah. happened. And what you can actually be doing in the case of dogs is eliminating the warning system. I've always said that I love a dog that growls at me because when a dog growls, he's telling me he's upset. Mm-hmm. And I would Point. Thank that dog. Thank you for letting me know that you're upset before I get in your personal space and get bitten. I don't want to get bitten. And what dogs do is they tell us that they're scared. And it's a warning system for us. The dog saying, back off, you're terrifying me or you're scaring me. I don't want to bite you. But if you push that, then I, I might bite you. And if you punish a dog for telling you he's afraid, you're not punishing the fear. You're punishing him telling you that he's afraid. So I've had certain cases that were very dangerous to work with where the dog had been punished so much for growling, he just didn't growl anymore. Was no less afraid, but he didn't growl anymore. And those are the dogs that go straight to a bite. And those are very, very dangerous. And it's true that when a dog is uh, biting or ready to bite or just does a little, just misses you or drags the tooth or punctures in, don't most dogs know how to control and know what they're exactly doing? It's not just a hit or miss. You're so right. Uh, Puppies are sloppy. Yeah. Puppies are sloppy with their teeth, but adolescent and adult dogs, they're very precise. You didn't, thank God I moved away in time. You're not a cheetah. You, you cannot move <laughs> away in time to escape a bite. If the dog bit you, he meant to bite you. If the dog didn't bite you, he meant to miss. And, and the opposite of that with the scenario there is, is true. If the dog bit you, he meant to. A lot of people, you, oh, you know, I'll come to a lesson and they're covered in, you know, bandages and like, well, he didn't mean to, uh, you know, I, I slipped. I'm like, no, he meant to bite you. Let's yeah. just call it what it is so that we can work with it. But you no, know, they're very precise with their teeth. Wow. And, uh, the other thing with this, uh, you know, with dogs that are a little bit afraid and because we've got the noisy fireworks coming, There's a a doggy training no-no. It's called flooding. Can you put that into context when it comes to the 4th of July? What not to do and what to do right for a dog that may have some noise phobias, especially thunderstorms and fireworks? I think this is a common issue. People think my dog is afraid of men, so I'm going to take him to Home Depot where there's lots of men. My dog is afraid (laughs) of kids, so I'm going to go to a kid daycare. And that is not how you do it. So I had once had a client whose dog was terrified of fireworks. And her boyfriend took the dog and said, he's got to get over it. So they took the dog to a fireworks display and the dog put on the brakes and the guy was dragging the dog to get closer to the fireworks and the dog bit him. And I told her I would have bitten him too. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Can you imagine flooding is dangerous. Flooding is when you take the thing that they're afraid of, the thing that a person's afraid of, and you you flood them with it so they can't get away. It can work in rare situations, but when it backfires, it backfires spectacularly, and it can create a lot of problems. So with fireworks, there's lots of things that you can do to try to help your dog, but don't put them deliberately in a situation where they're going to be flooded with these noises and these terrible sounds and displays. It's just too much for them. All right. Hey, folks, we've been speaking with T.O.D. Anderson. She's a certified professional dog trainer, and you were, you're a past president, aren't you, of the yes. Association of Professional Dog Trainers? I am. Yes, I am. That's pretty cool, guys, because that's the largest group in the world of dog trainers, and Ian Dunbar, a very renowned veterinarian, is the one who founded that. So you've been at this for two dozen years, and you look like you're still in your 20s. You are wonderful. (laughs) I am. I am. No, seriously. (laughs) You are awesome. My secret is I love what I do. Yep. There you go. That's good. That's good. Hey, folks, I want you to learn more about how to bring out the best in your dog. And I want you to go to the TOTAnderson.com site. That's T-E-O-T-I Anderson. 
Also, get your paws on her book called The Dog Behavior Problem Solver. She's on Facebook. She teaches classes all over the world. I think she's got a flight booked to the moon, don't you? (laughs) I don't know if there's a lot of dogs here, but I'm looking forward to it. Sure. Yeah. So what would be a parting message you'd like to give all the folks that dig dogs out there? Just have some extra patience for them, especially as we come up in the summer months. Also remember that if your dog has never been trained outside your home, doesn't mean they're going to perform outside your home. So the dog that comes every time you call them in your backyard isn't necessarily going to do that off-leash in the woods during the summer vacation. So make sure you put in a little extra training this summer to make sure that you can enjoy your canine companion as you go on your vacation travels. I think that's perfect. I like that. That's actually great advice, you know me. So I have to get that in there. Yeah, it's nothing's better than to have a dog that can come on cue, whether it's a hand signal or your voice and in your backyard and everywhere. So you've got to make sure that you are such a hot commodity, right, Teodi, that the dog just can't wait to be by your side. Exactly. Uh, we've got a lot of competition out there, and it's very humbling. Squirrel, for to squirrel, squirrels. Squirrel. <laughs> lizard poop here in the <laughs> South Florida. It's lizard poop. It and people it? are hurt to find out that they are not as interesting as lizard poop, but that's a dog for you. So you got to make yourself more interesting than lizard poop. That's my parting thought for you. <laughs> so we're not going to slather ourselves with lizard poop, are we? Uh, no, no. <laughs> we're going to come out with some, you know, smoked Gouda cheese. That's what uh-huh. we're going to do. <laughs> There you go. That sounds great. You really are doing a lot of great things for two, three, and four-leggers. And I'm just delighted that it's been long overdue that you have are a guest on my show. Oh, thank you, Arden. Thanks so much for inviting me. All right, guys. And at this time, we also want to do a shout-out to our producer of Pet Life Radio Shows. That is Mark Winter. He is the Wizard of Paws. Yay! And, woohoo! And uh, we're all about making it, this a better planet for all of us. And so uh, be good to your dog. Take your dog to a, a dog training class taught by a, a trainer that is certified in positive reinforcement techniques. There's a lot of great ones out there because we can't clone T.O.D. Anderson. If we could, we would. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, everybody, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave! Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.